So my name is Sam Gikandi. I'm the CEO at Africa Stocking Group, um, where we we basically uh, make life easy for developers. Um, so our goal is to make sure that we expand opportunities for developers and we give them the tools, the environment um, they need to be successful. Um, so we have a flagship product which is a Telco API. So it's an API that makes it easy for developers to connect to mobile operators uh, like MTN, Airtel, Safaricom and so on and so forth um, for their communication needs. So if you want to send bulk SMS, if you want to build USSD applications, uh, you can connect to that API and, um, and then you can basically communicate with any user across Africa. We also have a customer data product. <clears throat> so this is actually a platform that reduces the time it takes um, to build an application that is personalized uh, from months to hours. So you don't have to think about analytics, you don't have to think about managing uh, distributed infrastructure, um, and we have a programming framework that makes it easy for you to personalize how you build this application uh, for, your, for every user. So if user X comes to use your application versus user Y, you can personalize the experience. Um, and this is a product that we've developed over the last couple of years. We're very excited about it. Uh, we're excited about the, the ease of use, the developer experience, um, <clears throat> the personalization capability at scale, um, the ability to automate communications across multiple providers like Africa Stocking, Twilio, um, the ability to automate payments, manage payments, uh, manage wallets, um, manage your organization's money. Um, all just using simple calls to an API using JavaScript, Python, PHP, or your favorite language. Um, and it's also a product that makes it easy for you to respect the customer's data. Um, so it gives you a way to, to basically build a lot of um, the requirements around data privacy, data protection, um, and giving the customer the ability to manage their own data. Um, so, so we have all the tools that make it easy for you to do that. Um, and it's, so yeah, so it's a, it's a very ambitious product. Um, and we, we've been toying around with different ways of going to market. Um, and we ultimately decided that we'd like to <coughs> basically go to market together with the developer ecosystem. Um, so not only would we like to release this product, but we'd also like to make it open source. So make it available for developers so anyone can contribute um, and basically share their vision on what they think this product should look like. Um, and we're already seeing a lot of energy. Behind me there is tons of developers that are already uh, giving us a lot of feedback, a lot of insights, um, and are raring to go to really help uh, build this product and, and take it to market. Um, and we're seeing this as something that can really re-energize and galvanize the, the developer ecosystem, especially here in Africa, by having this large-scale products. Um, so this product is more than 100,000 lines of code. So, so it's actually a massive, uh, massive product. Um, there's lots of great engineering in there. Um, and we think that it can actually help create, <coughs> help developers move from where they are to building products that work at scale, that um, you know, have analytics, um, are well distributed, and so on and so forth. So we, we basically want to use this to uh, to teach developers how to build these kinds of applications. Um, so yeah, so we're very open, and and we also want to build want to build in uh, a business model that rewards people who contribute, rewards the creativity of developers. So let's say you come, you build an application, and some company wants to use that application, we want to make sure the developer who builds the application gets paid every time the company uses that application. So we want to share uh, the revenues from this product with the developers. And we also want to use this product to seed a foundation for the African girl child. So we think the African girl child is the most marginalized population in the world. And we'd like to use this to basically bring resources that help advance the causes of the African girl child expand opportunities and maybe have a lot more women coming into the tech ecosystem because I, I think and you, if you look behind me there's a lot of there's a lot of energy amongst guys to come and hack and build code um, but we'd love to create safe spaces where even women girls can come and really learn how to code uh, we just talked to one girl who wants to become a, a neuro Neuro brain surgeon, um, and you know, it's, so so, she, so you can see the girls are not shying away from 
you know, really tough technical, uh, technical opportunities. So we want to make sure that they're also well represented in tech, uh, which we think can really transform this continent uh, very, very quickly. So yeah, so Illyrian for us, we, we think Illyrian means good. Uh, we think that's what it stands for. Um, and, and we want to see if it's something, if we try and do this, if we try and bring the ecosystem together, if we try and open it up, teach developers how to build this product, um, can we come up with something that is African, that is, um, that is basically going to help us advance um, you know, as a continent and, and expand opportunities for everyone? Um, yeah, so, so that's, in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's where we are. Yeah, so, so Africa's talking has, has provided um, almost like a thin layer that allows you to, uh, to reach users very easily. Um, now, once you start reaching these users at scale, you need to personalize how you work with these users. Um, so if you think about, for example, you're building, um, you're building an application that will provide banking services to farmers, um, and you want to understand how each farmer wants to consume those services. In order for you to build an application that is personalized for each of your 100,000 farmers, there's a lot of engineering that goes into that. So Illyrian looks at that problem and then figures out how do you build using simple technologies, but then build something that makes it easy for you to personalize and make sure every farmer is, is feeling like you're talking to them. You're not just, they're not just one in a crowd. Um, so Illyrian does that by <coughs> helping you as a developer build a rich digital equivalent of your customer. Um, so there is, there is what we call an Illyrian entity, um, and that's a representation of your customer. Um, and then that entity is then empowered to engage you, the human. So that entity is the one that will send you a message, is the one that will initiate a payment, is the one that will receive a payment, it will handle your call. So it's almost like a digital virtual assistant um, that knows who you are. Um, and decides, you know what, today is um, Independence Day in Nigeria. Uh, you're Nigerian, you're a particular age, you want to receive a message. You know, maybe you're patriotic. Uh, or maybe you're a teenager, you don't care, you're not so patriotic, so you don't want to receive that message. Um, or, you know, you've expressed interest in attending an event, the event is happening today, we want to remind you, hey, this event is happening. So how do you create and bring to life that digital persona? And what does that persona look like? So you have information on their messaging, on their payments, on their activities. So let's say you have a website, what activities have they been doing on the website? Uh, you've built an app, what activities have they been doing on that app? Um, and then how do you now look at that in totality and then decide how do I engage this user? Um, so that's the whole goal behind Illyrian. We can start building a new type of app that really has the entire, the 360 degree view of this person. Um, and then makes decisions on how to engage these customers. So, so we're excited about where that's going to go. Obviously, um, we're going to rely a lot on the creativity of developers once they start, the more they start discovering what the platform does. And we're seeing this with more and more hackathon, hackathons. People are starting to internalize. Oh, so, you know, so this is not the traditional database. This is a new kind of database that allows me to um, build a different way of, of, of engaging the customer. Um, and at the same time, gives you the tools to give the customer control over that data because let's say someone travels to Uganda, um, uses the app, when they come back to Kenya they might decide, hey, I don't want to be, I don't want you to have my data. So you can actually go in and specify, I don't want this data to be, uh, to be retained by this application. Um, and if you think about use cases like healthcare, um, even financial fintech use cases where data is quite sensitive, that becomes um, one of those use cases that I think we can really drive um, a lot of that value uh, by make it, making it easy for developers to build those kinds of applications. Absolutely. So we're giving the developer the tools they need to give their customers the power over their data. Um, ultimately, that's, that's, the, that's the principle behind Illyrian. And we say it's about building responsibly. So, um, so you, don't, you don't throw all users into one database and then treat them all the same and send a bulk message to all of them wishing them happy birthday, no. <laughs> you know, you treat each user as if they are a unique individual, they have their own preferences, there's a way they want to be engaged, um, there's a way they want you to use their data. So we're giving you the tools to build those kinds of applications. Um, so yeah, so it's, and I, I think it's kind of a bridge between Web 2 and Web 3, uh, if you think about it, where you know, Web 3 is all about you know, anonymizing the data and decentralizing and making sure that you have full autonomy over that data. 
Uh, so we're giving you, we're giving the customer that experience, but then using Web2 technology. Oh, it's been amazing. I, I, I love, I, I'm, a young, I'm a young soul at heart. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 40, but you know, I, I, like, I like house music. <laughs> you know, I like, I'm, I'm just getting back into it. Um, you know, I like, I love the energy. I love the conversations I'm having with developers. I love that even though we haven't done this for quite a number of months, the energy is still there. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm, there's a lot of just push to get this done. Um, yeah, I love the atmosphere. Uh, I just wish there were more women that, that came for these hackathons. And, and that's my challenge. You know, how do we get to the point where there is equal representation and we're not leaving a certain section of the population behind? How do we become intentional about that? Um, but for me, this, I wish we could do this every day. I mean, I, I, I really wish we could do this. And, and, I, and I really want to do this to the point where we have a sufficient quorum of developers who really know how to build this product um, and who can really you know, help drive this, uh, this vision along and bring their own creativity into this. Um, so yeah, so it's been great, it's been great.